Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me okay? Welcome to class. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hi, Delmi. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Hello, Henry. Can you hear me okay? Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Let's wait a little bit for the rest of the class. We should be all right. Let's see what they're saying. Are you guys ready for the tongue twisters today? Yeah, yeah, we are ready, I think. <laughs> all right, all right. Happy to hear that, happy to hear that. Always ready. Always ready. Nice. Raf, my friend, hello. Kevin, welcome. Angelica, welcome. Welcome, Diana. Hello, Lisette, hello. Good evening. You only use good night, Kevin, when you're saying goodbye, like when you're leaving and walking out. And to everybody here, a good night. And then that's when you say it. You can also say you're having a good night at work. That you can say it like that as well. But if you're walking into a class, if you're walking anywhere, you have to say good evening. Jorge, my friend. Welcome to Advanced English, Jorge. We hey, missed hello. you yesterday. Hello, hey. hello. Nice to see you again, sir. Nice to see you again as well. Missed you yesterday. Yes, I, I can know you, but here I am. There we go, there we go. That'll work. All right. Um, welcome, everybody. We're going to get started. We have a pretty busy day today little bit of practice, a little bit of everything, really. And so let me go ahead and start sharing my whole screen with sound. I always like to start my classes by discussing how you guys are doing in your modules. So how is everybody doing with the modules? Uh, we had a little bit of an issue. We escalated uh, sections uh, one point. I, I believe it was 1.5, 1.8. There was three different sections that we escalated yesterday. Jarvin. Welcome, welcome, Jarvin. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. So, everybody good is, is the, besides those issues that we had, Please keep in mind, they're in the what's up. Alex, hello, welcome. We have been, uh, I was telling the class, we have three issues with knowledge checks. And so we have escalated those. Hopefully they get fixed during this week, hopefully, right, hopefully. Uh, if not, we can keep escalating because it's not it's not our fault, right? That the answers are not they're not the system doesn't allow the answers. 
even if they are correct, it marks them down as wrong. So, en el grupo de WhatsApp los pusimos. Hopefully we can get those fixed, all right? Besides those issues that we had been seeing, has everybody been able to log in? Everybody okay with the logging in? For me, yes, teacher. Okay, good, good. Welcome, Jose. Welcome, Josue. Just as a quick reminder, please remember you can go through all the sections. And what we are going to do is we're going to go back to some of the most important parts of the section and then we're going to review them. And we're going to try to incorporate exercises and explanations. All right, so 1.8 is one of the bad ones. Uh, there was another one, 1 1.2 was another one. So just keep your eye on that once you guys start to fill them in. Hopefully they will be fixed pretty soon. Please remember that this week is for section one. And as you guys can see, Inglés Avanzado, Módulo 1, only has four modules, which means that the midterm is going to appear on Section 2 and the final test on Section 4. The course usually ends a little bit earlier than the one that you guys see here. It's usually about maybe two or three days before. Uh, it used to be a lot longer, but I think now is a little bit shorter. So also keep an eye out for that. Don't think that because it says April 1st here that we are gonna wait all the way up until April 1st. Be careful with that one. Jose, hello, Joe. Hello, hello, Gonzalo. Welcome aboard. Welcome to class. Hello. Hello, hello. We can hear you. We can hear you, Jose. Okay. <laughs> How are you? Good. We're good. We're good. Can you uh, hear me? Good. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic to hear that. Okay. Uh, that's enough uh, with the with our website and our modules. Uh, we're gonna get started. Okay. So remember the class, this class, we're gonna we're gonna use a lot of the section modules. However, it's a little bit different, right? Because we're only gonna choose the most important portions of it. And then based on that, then we're gonna work on the different materials or exercises. Yesterday, we had started to use tongue twisters. You guys remember these tongue twisters? Yes. All right, good, good, good. I'm glad, I'm happy that you guys remember these. Okay, the tongue twisters are made to create, I wanna say flexibility in your tongue, right? To be able to, to kind of read as fluently as possible. And, and from that, it, you can take it away into a conversation or when you guys are having a, you know, when you guys are having to say something or express an idea. It also works out that way. Uh, yesterday we had worked on some of these, uh, like woodchuck. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Oh my goodness, right? I got better at that one. They really got me the first time around. We had another one called a skunk on a stump. A skunk sat on a stump and thunk the stump stunk. But the stump thunk, the skunk stunk. Oh, that one was hard yesterday as well. But it's getting better. I had this one. This one was the hardest for me. Through three cheese trees, 
three free fleas flew. Oh my God, that one's. While these fleas flew, freezy breezy blew. Freezy breezy made these three trees freeze. Freezy trees made these trees cheesy freeze. That's what made these three free fleas sneeze. Oh, that one, I'm getting better at that one as well. Really, really rusty, but we're working on it. And I promised the class that I was going to get you some shorter versions of those so that we can also try to start using them. She sells seashells by the seashore. That one's easy. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Oh. All right. So with that in mind, I would like to ask for volunteers who would like to try some of these. You can try any of the tongue twisters we have here. And you can choose from these four individually. Cheese. You don't have to do all of them. Cheese, seals, shells. Holy set. Cheese. You want you want to try this one? <laughs> okay. I sorry. I think I was in you. Uh, she sells sea shells by the seashore. All right. There we go. Right. So remember, the idea is we can start slow. She sells seashells by the seashore but as time moves forward we have to be able to say a little bit faster and faster and faster um, she sells seashells by the seashore right to the point where you would have to say really really fast fast in order to say that oh my god okay we we really got the hang of it so that's good that's good for the first try please keep in mind that we're going to practice these all of these four weeks. So the more practice, the better we get at it, right? Rafael, welcome, welcome to class, sir. Welcome aboard. Okay, there's a few more on here. Who else would like to practice? Well, dedocraticamente, vamos a dedocraticamente. No, Kevin, Kevin, um, my friend. I will give it a shot. Kevin, which oh, one? Kevin first, you, yeah. Which one do you want to try? Uh, is that, yeah, Kevin, I think Kevin raised his hand. I'm sorry, was that uh, Ricardo? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. I raised my hand. All right, Kevin. Yeah, you raised your hand for it. Kevin, which one would you like to try? Uh, the, this one that is uh, the fourth. The I saw? Yes. All right, let's try that one. Let's see. I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop. There we go. Shh, shh, right? That one is hard for us, man. I don't know if it's here in El Salvador or, you know, uh, across Latin America, but the S and the H sound is pretty hard. I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop and you got it. That's the way. Now, remember, remember, Kevin, it has to be faster, right? I saw yeah. Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop. Try to say uh, it a little bit faster. Faster. Okay. Uh, I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop. There we go. You got it. There we go, Kevin. You got it. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin. Ricardo. Yeah, I will try the scream one. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. There we go. Yeah. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream, right? Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. There we go. Great pronunciation on scream and cream. All right. Good, good for you, Ricardo. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else that want to try some of the short ones? How about Peter Piper? Peter Piper is easy. You guys remember this one? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Who can beat the teacher? Volunteers, volunteers for Peter Piper. This is pretty easy. Come on, yeah, right. Volunteers, volunteers. Rick, let's try it out. Let's try it. Peter Piper. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. 
A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper pick? There we go, Peter Peter Piper. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, um, but I, I think I think you guys do. I think you guys do. There was a show called Friends. You guys remember that? Some people hate it. Some people love it. I'm I'm in, I'm, I'm torn in the middle because I, I enjoy watching it, but I'm not like a huge fan. There was one episode where there's a guy named Joey. He's an actor. And he's practicing how to correctly enunciate and pronounce uh, certain words. And he had to do a scene where he had to pronounce the P. But the actor that was helping him with the lines told him that he had to really, really spit. And so throughout, uh, you know, the practice, they spit on each other. And it's actually, you know, it's pretty funny. But it, it kind of brings back to Peter Piper, right? When you guys sound out the P, there has to be a little P. p. It, it, and, and I know that it's it's a little bit awkward at first, but... Once you guys get used to it, there's no more spitting, right? It's There's only spitting at the very beginning. Uh, Peter, there has to be like a little... P -p Peter Piper picked a pick of pickled peppers. And there's like a little push of air because that P has to really sound out. All right? So uh, good job. Good job on that. And for everybody in class, keep keep in mind, right, how these sounds and how, you know, different letters create different sounds. And, and that's how we implement them, okay? All right, so the tongue twisters, let me see, let me see. I think I have, oh, I have chalk. Oh my goodness, this one, this one's a little bit more advanced. Quien se anima, who is gonna be brave enough for this one? Chuck's job was to chop chips. You guys remember the difference between this, the S-H, oh, sorry about that. Here we are going to be able to hear it. The sh sound versus the ch cha. Chapulín Colorado. Chespirito. We can hear it here. Volunteers for this one. Quien se anima? Who's going to be brave? Rick. Rick is going to go. All right. Taking, taking one for the class, Rick. Let's do it. Okay, Chuck's job was to chop chips. Chuck was a chip chopper. In fact, he was a top chip chopper. The chips were shipped to the chip shopping shop, and Chuck chopped the chips. The chip chopping shop also had a chip checker. He checked the chips, chop, chopped. Well done. Well done, Rick. Well done. In, 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 you had done some of these, and you, you actually completed some of the tongue twisters with ease. How did this one feel, Rick? It's kind of tricky with, for example, ship for Gary. the ship when he right. sent the chips to the shop because it's a SH and I have to pronounce it like in a soft way. There we and go. So, yeah, sometimes yeah. it gets tricky. It sometimes it gets tricky and it's because of that, right? The, the SH and the CH and, and it's hard for us uh, from the very beginning. So the more you practice with words that are SH and CH, the better you will get, right? So how, how do we do it? Well, Chuck, right? Remember we we're talking about like woodchuck, the pronunciation is the same, except this one is Chuck is a name. Um, let's say for example, if your name is Charlie, you can, you can say Chuck as well, Carlos or Charlie or Chuck. You could say that it's kind of like a little nickname, right? Chuck's job was to chop chips. Chuck was a chip chopper. In fact, he was the top chip chopper. The chips were shipped to the chip chopping shop and Chuck chopped the ships. Oh, I, I say ships instead of chips. The chip chopping shop also had a chip checker. He checked the chips, Chuck chopped. Oh, that one's tough. 
We're going to practice it until we get it 100% fast and 100% right. And as you guys can see, we have a few. Famous woodchuck. All right. And of course, the ones that we had, uh, there was this one, which was a flea. A flea and a fly flew up in a flu. Said the flea, let us fly. Said the fly, let us flee. So they flew through a flaw in the flu. Oh, no, I got that one. I got that one a little bit faster and I think we should be okay. Last one, who wants to try the flea? Who wants to read flea? Volunteers. Me, sir. There we go, George. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's okay. do it. A flea and fly flew. Uh, sorry. A flea and fly flew up in the uh, in a flu. Say the flea, let it fly. Say the say the fly, let it flee. So they flew through a flu in the fly. There we go. Oh, oh that one's tough, right? Right, one's tough. Now, whenever we see these, what happens is sometimes we forget about these little sounds, right? And that fly. A or a, uh, depending on where it is. Right. If it's at the very beginning, usually starts off with an A, a flea and a fly. So you guys can say a fly or you guys can say a fly. Both of them will work. A okay. flea. You can say a flea as well. A flea and a fly flew up in a flu. Oh, all right. There we go. Right. So just remember these. And we should be all right. All right. Good, good, good. That's good for the tongue twisters. This is our opening every day, right? We're going to talk about our modules. We're going to talk about our tongue twisters. Blah, 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 blah. And what we're trying to do is we're going to try to loosen up those tongues. All right. So moving ahead, we're going to talk about what we saw on section one or the most important portions of section one. Sections one, 1.0, 1 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 and I, I believe there was some videos here that talked about infinitives and gerunds. Now, this is, I believe, the easiest way to look at it, right? Think of an infinitive of just being the words T-O or two. And then you add that to a word and it becomes an infinitive. Uh, for example, to arrive, and that becomes an infinitive there, right? Uh, if you guys say to be, that also becomes an infinitive. To prepare, and that is an infinitive. So the only thing you have to worry about when it comes to infinitives is adding the word to or the letters T-O at the very beginning. To be, and then you continue with the phrase, to be on time is important in US culture. To be on time is not important in Salvadorian culture. Have you guys noticed that for Salvadorians it's kind of hard to get to be there on time? We try to arrive on time every day, all right? Hello, let's see, I saw somebody come in. I saw somebody pop in. No, I think it was just my imagination. All right. Yes. Could you ask them to prepare something for the meeting, right? An infinitive. How do you make an infinitive? What do you have to add to a word to make it an infinitive? Two. Two, that's it, right. The letter T and the letter O. And the sound, two. And you guys are set. And that's it. Now, the same thing happens with the gerunds. However, they are only considered gerunds under certain specific, under certain specific rules. Okay? Now, how do you make a gerund? Well, you add a verb and you add the ing. It is also known as verbing because you use a verb and then you add ing. However, the rule is a little bit different, right? Whenever you see verbing versus a gerund. So now 
the explanation is that a gerund is a form of a verb used as a subject or an object in a sentence. And that's how it becomes a gerund. For example, run, right? How do you create a gerund from run? Ah, well, you add the ing and you create running. And now your sentence starts with running is my favorite form of exercise. It could also be the object. We like running. And there it is. That is a gerund. Now, when is a gerund not a gerund? When we use it as a verb, right? When we say we are running, are running, and the word running stops being a gerund because we are using it as a verb. All right. So it's it gets a little complicated, but as we're move, as as you guys are gonna see, and the exercises that we're gonna do, we're gonna try to do our best to explain it. And why is it that the rule happens? Or when do we activate the rule? Okay. So far, how are you guys feeling? How are the infinitives versus a jaron? Is everybody okay with, with this slide so far? Do you guys have any questions? Nice, all right, all right. So we're moving forward. And so let me give you the explanation and the rule, right? This is in case somebody tells you, you know, what is a gerund? Well, the definition of a gerund is that it's a noun ending in ing that has been formed from a verb. For example, thinking, playing, painting, eating. So now, Unlike a normal noun, a gerund can be modified by an adverb and take an object. The example here is carefully painting the fence. And you can use it in that way as well. Okay. Let me show you the rules on when it is considered a gerund. If you're using it as a subject, which means the very beginning of your sentence, running is good for your heart. In that very moment, the word running is a gerund. If you use it as a direct object, he hates waking up early. He hates waking up early. Waking is the direct object and a gerund. If you're using it as a subject complement, an object complement, an object of a preposition or an object of a possessive. What I dislike most is repeating myself. I saw Tom riding his bike. I am interested in improving myself. She does not like your bossing her around. So, Look at the position of the word ending in ing to kind of, you know, have an idea of how it's being used. Running at the very beginning, waking in the middle, repeating almost at the end, writing as a complement to an item, for example, his bike, an object of a preposition, and of course, a possessive. How do you convert a gerund? Easy. From a verb, you add ing, and you can turn a, a word like work into working or a word like play into playing, or a word like study into studying. 
Everybody okay so far? Under these circumstances, the verb with an ing is considered a gerund, okay? Now, we do have a quick overview of infinitives because you can turn pretty much any word into an infinitive. What do you need to add to turn it into an infinitive? Two, that's it, that's it, right? So let's say, let's say, Kevin, I have the word agree, which is the first word here. How can I turn that into an affinitive? Uh, adding to like, to agree. There we go, to agree. That's it, that's it. Now, how can I turn agree into a gerund? What would I need to do? Adding ing at the end. You got it, my friend, right? And now you have agreeing. Same goes for the word aim. You can say to aim, or you can say aiming. There we go, you guys got it. That's it. Real easy the easiest in the world. Okay, but you have to remember that if you add the word to, you also have to sound it out. To agree, to aim, to afford, okay? Because if you don't sound it out, then it's it'll probably not make too much sense. All right, so with that in mind, I wanna practice a little bit on the vocabulary side. And each day, we're going to go through different letters. And we're going to try to learn new words and how to pronounce them. Okay. If you guys want, you guys can sound them out. With your mics turned on, or you can leave them turned off. It gets a little bit messy because everybody starts to say it, and, but that's A-okay with me. All right. If you want me to hear it and see if we can help you with the pronunciation, you can also let me know and we'll stop and we'll focus on the word. I will say the word first and then you guys repeat it after me, okay? Everybody set? All right, here we go, guys, here we go. Cultural. Culture. 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 Cup. 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 Real, real quick, cup. 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 All right. Current. 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 Customer. 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 Okay. There are there are a couple of ways to say current. Okay. You can say the current, like if it's the river, la corriente. You can say current like it's something that is happening the latest that is happening or you can say like this what is the current situation in afghanistan that is correct ricardo like currently that is correct so it could either be the current from the river or you can say something like you know current events and what happens is that the pronunciation at the beginning of the word is the one that changes, right? If you voice it out really loud at the very beginning, like current, then it becomes the river. But if you start really low and then increase the volume in the R-E-N-T, like current, like current events, then it changes the meaning. So be careful with this one because there's a couple of ways of pronouncing it. And depending on your pronunciation or the word stress, it changes the meaning, okay? All right, we're gonna move on to cut. Cut, cut, cut. cut. We're gonna go into chair. 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 One more time, chair. 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 There we go. You wanna pronounce it like if it's the singer. Chair. <laughs> chair. 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 
There we go, the chair. Chair. Mm -hmm. Challenge. 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 Character. 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 Charge. 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 Check. 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 Child. 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 Choice. 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 That one sounded choice. Yeah. Choose. 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 One more time. Choose. 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 Like choice. It has to be like ch 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 choice. Choose. 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 There we go. Choose. Como si están diciendo chusito. Choose. Papa choose. Choose. Yeah. choose. Okay. Church. 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 One more time. Church. 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 There we go. Church. Dead. 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 No se pronuncia, no se pronuncia la A, sino que it sounds like a dead, dead. What happened to him? He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Yeah. Deal. Deal. Ojo con esta. Death. Death. Hay muchas personas, hay muchas personas que lo pronuncian como death, pero no se dice así. No se dice death. Se dice death. Death. Debate. Debate. Decade. 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 Decide. Decision. Decision. Deep. Deep. Defend. Defend. Defendant. Defense. 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 Defensive. 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 Deficit. Deficit. Define. Define. Definitely. Definitely. That was a little bit challenging, right? Definitely. 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 Definition. 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 Degree. 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 Delay. 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 Deliver. Delivery. Deliver. Delivery. 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 Oh, one more time. Delivery. 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 Deliver. 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 There we go. Okay. Demand. 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 Okay. So the, with this one as well, depending on how you pronounce it, right? Depending on how you say it, it also has different meanings. Democracy. Democracy. Democrat. 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 Okay. All right. We're going to leave it right there because tomorrow we're gonna continue with the Ds all the way up to E. So we're gonna leave three for tomorrow, or hopefully we can do two tomorrow and then continue with E and then you know move forward. I have a whole bunch of these. Was there any words that you guys had not seen before that we can look up the meaning that you guys need for us to look up the meaning? or pretty much everything made sense and you guys had heard of the word somewhere in a song, in a series, in a movie, you guys had an idea of what it was. All familiar, all right, good, good, good. All right, we're gonna put this one here, we're gonna put this one on hold and we're gonna switch over the, the exercises. Let's see if you guys got the hang of the jarrens. Okay. Um, if you guys have been in classes before, there's a few teachers that use these. And the website is called Life Worksheets. Let me go ahead and type it in for you guys. Live Worksheets, hold on, it's double, it's an S there, dot com. And once you get there, all you have to do is use the search and you can look for whatever exercise you wanna work on. In this one particularly, 
we're going to work on both of them separate. So now, whenever you guys look up infinitives and gerunds, they are usually together. Infinitives and gerunds, right? What I did here is we're going to split them up so that we look at them individually. Okay. So the reason I stopped with the vocabulary is because we have some more vocabulary here, right? And so what is a gerund and when do we use it, right? What are the rules? When a verb is used as a noun to begin a sentence, the example, playing basketball is fun. Playing basketball is fun. Playing basketball is fun. As the object of a preposition, for example, David is in charge of organizing the party. There's a couple more examples on there as well, right? You guys can look at those. After some expressions with two, ah, you see how it comes into it and that's why they kind of go in together. I am used to eating out. Here it is, here's the example. I am used to eating out. I look forward to meeting you. And it can also be the object. We didn't object to changing our plans. Okay. After go, usually with recreational activities, I usually go fishing. So if you guys ever use go, play sports, go play basketball, right? In this particular case, they're using fishing and that becomes the gerund. Kevin, question, my friend. I have a question about some uh, expressions like what is the meaning of be used to look forward to? Okay, I look forward to meeting you. Se puede decir, se puede decir, Kevin, que es como, oh, it is, you know what, I have, I have a small presentation that I can, this is, there's a specific, I want to say, let me see. I look forward. Okay, yeah. Well, los veré is like you're saying you are going to see somebody. But when you say I look forward is more like hoping. Esperaría verlos la próxima semana. So I think... Uh, Eso, there we go. Los espero la próxima semana. Esperaría verlos la próxima semana. So it's more, there, yeah, yeah. So it's more like saying that you are hoping to see somebody. You know what, Kevin, if, if you remind me tomorrow, I can show you a quick, there's a, well, I can show the class. There's a small presentation that I have that covers some of these sayings. And that way, and that way it, it gives you a little bit more information about how it is. Yeah, get used to, okay. I, I look forward to meeting you, okay. look forward to, yeah, I, I think we can show it. I think I have it. So just remind me, remind me tomorrow, Kevin, as soon as you come in and hopefully okay, okay. I, can, I can show you that. All right. All right, so with the gerunds, you use them in this particular way and then you have words that you can use, right? So usually when you see these words, then, you know, it, it's a lot easier for you to use. Uh, words like admit, advise, anticipate, appreciate, avoid, can't help, complete, consider, delay, deny, discuss, dislike, enjoy, finish, forget. And then you see the rest here, right? So this is how you use them and you use them with these words in the majority of the cases, okay? So now we're going into the practice round and what you guys will do here is we're turning and we are using the words at the bottom of my screen and we're gonna put them in a different blank spaces. And you guys have to read and tell me what word we need to put here. In this particular case, we're using only, 
only, only, only gerunds. No infinitives. Okay. So let's let's do the first one together, and then you guys can help me with the rest. So the sentence reads out: "Blank is good for your back. You should go to the pool every day." Mm, the pool. What happens at the pool? Okay, we swim. So swimming. There we go. And now it sounds like this: "Swimming is good for your back. You should go to the pool every day." That sounds pretty good. Next one. Anna is looking forward to blank the musical of the Lion King next week. Uh, let me see. Let me look at the bottom. See, listen. Well, no, eating, seeing would be the correct gerund. Anna is looking forward to seeing the musical of the Lion King next week. All right. Hasta ahí. Hasta ahí llega el teacher. Now I need you guys to help me out. Number three, and if you guys want, we can go number three, four, five, six, and that way we get them all complete. You guys see that there's 23 here. So take a look at them, read them, and then look at the words at the bottom, and then tell me what goes here. Listen. Number, number listen. one, they say, number three, listening. Do you enjoy listening, okay? Listening. Listen, did I misspell it? I misspelled it. <laughs> List. Oh my goodness, completely missed it. Okay. Number four. Num number four, these saying meeting? Meeting, meeting. Number five. Doing. Doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doing. Number six. Shaking. 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 I'll never forget. Ah, uh, shaking. My. Number seven. Eating. 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 All right, Eating. all right, all right. Number eight. Going. 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 Oops, sorry about that, guys. Eating. Going, going. All right. Number nine. Doing. 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 Doing homework. Doing homework. Doing. All right. Let's try it out. Doing homework is a good way to consolidate what we're learning. Okay. Number 10. Coming. Coming. Coming? Yes, coming. Okay. Number 11. Stealing. 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 Oh, stealer. Number 12. Renting. 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 All right, those look pretty solid to me. Hold on, we're gonna give it. We're gonna give it a go, and see how we are. I think we're, that way it gives us enough time. Now I wanted to talk to you guys real quick. There was a word here. You guys see how it says shopping center? You guys can say center, or you guys can say like that. Now, what's the difference between these two? Center is the American way of doing it. And center with the T-R-E is the English version. But both of them mean the same thing. They both mean the center of something. The city center or, you know, the center of, uh, well, in this case, the shopping center. And it could either be center or center. 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 
okay. but they mean the same exact thing, okay? All right, let's try it out. Let's see what happened. All green, baby, all green, baby. Oh, well done. Well done, okay? All right, so let's try the same exercise, except here we're gonna talk about infinitives only. You can use it as the subject to vote. You can use it as an it. It is very important to vote in an election. You can use it with two and enough. This table is too heavy to carry. After most common adjectives, I'm sorry to see you like this. He's determined to find a job and with verbs followed by a pronoun plus the infinitive advise allow ask beg and so here's the the explanation and these are the words that you use it with to afford to agree to appear to arrange okay so same deal here you guys have to look at the words at the bottom and convert them to infinitives and then place them in the blank spots. Number one, it's really important, blank grammar and vocabulary before a test. To revise, to revise. To revise, all right. Number two, the doctor advised us blank an eye on the child during the night. To keep. Yeah. To keep. To keep. There we go. All right. My sister reminded me. The phone. The phone. To phone, home if I was going to be late. Sounds pretty good, okay. Number four. To buy. To buy. To buy. Wow, man, sorry about that. I always, to buy. Number five. Not to, to pass. I to pass, yeah. To pass. To pass. Oh, 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 okay. Number six. Uh, Bye. James decided blank his old car. He's going to keep it for a couple of years. Not to sell. To not sell. To not sell? Uh, no, not, more like not to sell. Not to sell? You know, let's try it. Decided not to sell. Can it be used that way? You know, I think I think we might be able to. Let's try it out. All right. Number seven. I'm like I'm sorry. Find out to find out. I'm sorry to find out. Mm -hmm. Sorry to find out that you haven't done your essay. Okay. Number eight. To lift. Be careful, those cases are too heavy to okay. lift. My best friend challenged me. To bring me. To bring. My best friend to challenged travel. me to travel. 
Wait, is it is it here? No. No, traveling no. is not there. Traveling, no. What do you think yeah, we're doing? There is travel. There is travel? There is travel. We travel, sit, learn. Oh, here. Oh, yes. My yes. best friend challenged me to In travel. To travel. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Let's try it. To the mountain top. Mm. You know, I don't know if it's travel. There's run here. To run. I'm, I'm feeling iffy. Let's leave travel, but in case we get it wrong, it might be run, right? Okay. The Sherpa instructed us blank side of the base camp. To run? Not to lose. To run? To not lose. Or not to lose. Yeah, to not lose. Side. Of Okay, 11. To bring it? To keep. To keep. To the weight. To, to keep. keep. Keep, yeah, sounds better. I to managed keep. To, to keep, keep it quite, quite well. well. But we have just keep. Two? To do, it can be I managed to to keep it to, to keep it quite it well. well. To keep it. To do. To do it. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, bring like oh, to, to, do to bring it, it to success. Quite well. Or doing, yeah. To do it quite well, okay. And the the last one, I can't afford Fine. to buy. To buy. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know, guys. I feel pretty good about this one, but let's see. <laughs> oh, oh. Let me see. To let me buy, see. you don't need to buy anything. When? Right. What else can we use? You don't bring. need to bring. bring anything. Yeah, there it is. Bring. So bring for this one. My best friend challenged me to run to the mountaintop. I think that's the next one. But number 10, somebody mentioned, I, I heard a couple of you guys. Not Try to lose. Not, not to lose. Not to lose. Not to lose. Not to lose. I think that's what it was. Okay, because here it worked. Look at not to sell. All right. Well, yeah, everybody, well done. Well work. done. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for us. That is it for us. Let me go ahead and go here. And that's it. That's it for number two. That's it for day number two. And the hour is up. Ladies and gents, it has been a pleasure having you guys here. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes back for your night. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Remember, we have WhatsApp as well, the WhatsApp group. You guys can also chat there. And if I don't answer, one of the teammates will answer. Um, if the teammates don't answer, more than likely I will, but it takes me a little bit of time throughout the day, but I will get to you, okay? All right, everybody, have a wonderful night. I hope you guys like the class today, and hopefully, you know, the remaining three weeks that we have left, we should have a lot of fun. Okay, take care, everybody. Good night. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care.